Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. The next uh, 10 minutes or so uh, is going to be important because we're going to be covering some important health and medical uh, content that uh, could make a difference in, in your life or those who are closest to you. And to do that, we're joined by Matt Ostroff, who is lead clinician and vascular access coordinator of the vascular access program at St. Joseph's Healthcare System, and Joanna Portella, who is the mother of a beautiful little girl by the name of Angelina, who is two and a half as we do this program. And she has benefited from the program Matt runs now. Angelina is dealing with what particular ailment? She has a rare genetic disorder. It's called pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency. It's metabolic. Um, it's an energy deficiency, basically. Her body doesn't metabolize energy. So when she eats food, you know, it doesn't turn it into energy to do things like walk, talk, systems, functioning. And so she has had to, since the day she was born, we met her. She's out with some of our producers who can't get enough of her right now. Yeah. Um, we're talking to her and playing with her, but she has been poked and veins have been looked for since the day she was born? Yeah, pretty much. Um, we've gone as far as arteries in her neck and arteries in her groin and it's, it's rough because you don't want to see your kid stuck in places that they shouldn't be stuck and, you know, it's sad. It's very sad. So I'm just happy to have programs like these available for her. So at nine months of age, you find out about this program at St. Joseph's. Yeah. And this guy. Mm -hmm. What is the program and how has it helped little girls like Angelina and so many others? Describe it. Sure. And we'll, by the way, we'll show some pictures as we do this to try to make it come alive. Sure. So vascular without actually demonstrating it. Okay. <laughs> sure. So vascular access is the most commonly performed procedure in medicine. It's called vascular access, mm -hmm. which is basically obtaining access to either your vein or your artery to either administer medication or to do hemodynamic monitoring. Um, what we've done, and I'm so excited to tell you about, we've perfected vascular access through the use of ultrasound. And uh, what we're able to do is see your veins now or your arteries and we can guide a needle in and see it directly go into the lumen of the vessel, the circle, which are your veins or your arteries. Lumen, the opening. Yes, yes, the hole. Right. Um, go right in there and provide access 99% on the first attempt. So let's take a step back. Yeah. It's the ultrasound that allows you and your colleagues to see where the lumen is where the needle should go previously without that? Previously, it was blind sticking. It was very good palpation techniques. You had excellent nurses that some could do it and some couldn't. Ultrasound completely levels the field. It's obviously a specialized skill, but what it allows you to do is go in and do the procedure rather than try. And the results are absolutely just amazing. Um, and we can apply it from adults all the way to the NICU, the tiny little babies. What ha be specific. Mm -hmm. What has it done for Angelina? It just, you know, not having to worry about, I have so much to worry about with her in her life that this is just one thing that, you know, makes my life easier. I don't have to worry about her crying. I don't have to worry about her being in pain. He actually stuck her twice in each arm and not a peep came out of her because he knew exactly where he was going. She didn't cry. And like I said, it's just one less thing that I have to worry about. I mean, my life with Angelina is so stressful. She's so medically compromised that I don't want to have to be like, oh, I have to go get labs done. Like, this just makes my life so much easier. So, so I hate to, and this is no, in no way a negative reflection on the wonderful nurses and who we admire, respect, and, and uh, revere and, and, and feature very often in public broadcasting. This is different because even the best nurse trying to find mm -hmm. where that vein is, it's challenging. Yeah, I mean, she, because of all her medical issues, she has very small veins. They're yes. very difficult to find. So, you know, before we found this program at St. Joe's, they would stick her and fish for it and fish for it until it would catch and then they would get it. But I mean, it's like holding down your child. Right, I, I yeah. I, uh, without disclosing too much, our, our son, Chris, is 12. He has veins that are hard to find. It's in nowhere anything like what mm -hmm. you're talking about. And I remember holding him down in the emergency room several times, the best nurses trying to find it. And they said, listen, his veins collapse. They're hard to find. This would make it easier for him and so many other kinds of patients. Describe the kinds of patients. 
even older patients. Yeah, and, and like to your point, the nurses are not bad at IVs. No, it has nothing to do the with that. The patient population that we're facing due to the advancements in medicine, they're living longer. We're getting chronic patients here. Sickle cell patients are living longer. Our cystic fibrosis patients, um, our chronic renal failure patients, these are the ones with the most difficult veins to access. And what ultrasound does is it just opens up your eyes and you can see every little piece. And again, you can assess, you can carefully assess and find the exact place to go and, and make it happen. As long as you do use the correct proper technique, right. which we've developed, it's, it's basically foolproof. We can get access on almost any but patient. But don't you, sorry for interrupting, don't you preserve veins in the process? Absolutely. Explain that. So the whole goal is to think about what's gonna happen next. What are we gonna do the next time you come to the hospital right. or in 10 years from now? So what I try to do, especially on yeah, like- play that out. Sure, on our sickle cell population. What I'll do, they used to get pick lines, which are central lines. Yes. This is what I was brought in I've for. I've had one. So <laughs> Dr. Connolly is our chairman of surgery. Yes. He brought me in to take the pick lines out of interventional radiology and allow those radiologists to do very complex procedures. And what happened was I was alone in this 700 bed trauma center and I was getting 20 orders a day and I couldn't keep up with it. But I started looking at what they were ordering these devices for and they weren't necessary for a pick we could use an IV, but how could we get that in? So I started doing the ultrasound guided IVs and you can map out veins from wow. the lower forearm up mm -hmm. and you can preserve all this upper arm vasculature. So like our children with cystic fibrosis, they usually always get a midline, which is a long catheter in yes. the arm or a central line. I'm getting them through their antibiotic therapy with our pulmonologist, Dr. Najahan, with peripheral IVs now. So we're preserving vasculature as they grow and it's gonna extend their lives. When was this technology, or when did this technology become perfected? Back in 2010, ERs started using ultrasound on uh, the patients to get IVs. And I was an ER nurse back then, and the director of uh, the ultrasound said, kid, do you want to learn this? <laughs> I said, sure, why not, because I was a paramedic. I liked all this stuff. Now you're stuff. a nurse practitioner. Yes, sir. Just recently happened. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And the reason I became a nurse practitioner was to complete the whole scope of vascular access from peripheral to central. So now there's nothing on your body that I can't access with ultrasound uh, in one attempt, and that's the goal. Where's the future of this going? I mean, why shouldn't every patient who needs, or family member who needs this kind of treatment have access to it? Steve, let me blow you away with this statistic, okay? In 2014, we did 25% peripherals, the little short IVs uh, in, on my team. In 2016, 80% of the procedures that I do are short peripheral IVs in our patients and only 20% central. Mm -hmm. That's eliminating all the risks of central line infection, carotid hematomas, right. air embolus. It's amazing what you can do when you triage, and I call it de-escalation. We put the simplest device in to get the patient through their yeah. prescribed therapy. Let me ask you, um, how is Angelina doing? Good, thank God. Yeah. She's healthy. She smiles a lot. She does, she's happy. She smiles, she laughs, she likes her music. <laughs> she loves her music. Yeah. And her visits to have her veins. Mm -hmm. Well, she's special. We have each other on speed dial. Yeah. <laughs> you do have her? Yes. So I have her in mm -hmm. as baby outpatient lab. And if she's coming to the hospital, she'll send me a text. Matt, are you in today? Yeah. We've come in the middle of the I night to. to the emergency room. Yeah, once. he's come to the emergency so. room to. And I actually won't let anybody touch Angelina unless I contact him first. It's important to have that connection. That Absolutely. Uh, Matt, Joanna, thank you so much. And to Angelina, we wish her nothing but the best. Thank you. And to your family. Thank Thanks. you so thank much. Thank you so much, Steve. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Adler Aphasia Center, Wells Fargo, Seton Hall University, PSE&G, New Jersey Sharing Network, NJM, and by Josh S. Weston. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, Small News, Big News, True Jersey, and by Commerce Magazine. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.